Hey YouTube, my name is Dr. Daniel Kaplan and my mission is to make psychology accessible to all. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about the sexual response cycle for males and females. And it is gonna serve as the foundation for some sexual dysfunctions that we're gonna talk about in future videos. So if you like what you have to hear, if you learn something new, click the like button, subscribe, click the notifications tab, and without further ado, let's talk about sexual response curves. Okay, at the foundation of this lecture is to try and understand what sexual dysfunctions are and to give you a sense of the extent to which uh, this is con concerning to people. We know sexual dysfunction is a series of disorders where a person does not perform normally in various areas of sexual functioning. And according to the research, three out of every 10 males and about four out of every 10 females will report having such a dysfunction during one or more points in their life. And sexual dysfunction can be very embarrassing. It can be distressing. It can in, uh, increase uh, poor self-esteem interpersonal problems and so forth. And oftentimes these dysfunctions are interrelated, but a person can have uh, one dysfunction on its own. However, the way we're gonna conceptualize them is that sometimes one can lead to another. So let's talk about the human sexual response curve. It has four phases according to Masters and Johnson. And it's important to note that Masters and Johnson's model is not the only model, but this is the standard model as the early sex experts. And they break the uh, response curve into four phases, desire or libido, excitement or arousal, orgasm or climax, and then resolution is post-orgasm. And a person uh, who has a disorder uh, in one, uh, it oftentimes it's going to affect the first, second, if not the third phase. Uh, obviously, if you've reached orgasm, the resolution phase is less of a problem. So the first three phases are what we tend to focus on. So let's talk about the male sexual response cycle. In the desire phase, you're going to see more muscle tension, increased heart rate, respiration increases. The skin can be uh, flush and you might see uh, blotches of redness. And then you see uh, blood flow to the genitals and the testicles start to swell, which leads into phase two, which is the excitement phase. And that's when you see that the penis becomes erect the testicles become more withdrawn up into the scrotum. And then your breathing, your heart rate and blood pressure continue to increase during that phase. Phase three is the orgasm phase. That is uh, where you have involuntary muscle contractions, um, release of semen, and you might even have a, a rash or sex flush all over the body. Uh, and it it's forceful and it's you know, sudden in terms of a release of uh, sexual tension. So the resolution for males, uh, males generally have a period post-orgasm where they need to recover. We call that the refractory period. Uh, it's different from male to male. Some people, it could be several minutes and for some, it can be even a day. So these are the response curve. Now, it's important that I put this graph here because what you see is several important things. For uh, physiological arousal, it continues, continues till it hits the climax of orgasm and then it resolves. So how long post-penetration does this usually take? For the average male, it's anywhere between five to 10 minutes. Um, and if you take an average from 2020, there was uh, a five and a half 
minute uh, collective average. So that's important because let's now look at the female sexual response cycle and some similarities and differences. So with desire, we see uh, similarities in terms of muscle tension and heart rate and respiration. We see the nipples start to get hard and erect and you have blood flow. So very similar scenario for the excitement phase, you still have more uh, increases in breathing heart rate um, and blood pressure as you saw the chart go up. Uh, and then you start to see uh, swelling of uh, the clitoris and the labia and lubrication of the vagina, which is going to facilitate penetration or to allow it to progress without pain. Now, during the orgasm phase, you have involuntary muscle contractions as well. And you can, um, you can see the pulsating of the, the uterus, its rhythmic contractions, and of the other features are similar from males to females. Now the resolution phase, there's two interesting points here. Uh, there is no refractory period. Right, so for males, they need a recovery time. For females, if you look at the cursor post orgasm, they can go right into a second or a third orgasm. So multiple orgasms are possible and common. Uh, however, there's something else that happens. You can have intimacy that has desire, excitement, and look at the purple dashes, where instead of going to orgasm, it goes to resolution. So it is possible for females uh, to have sex, have the desire, the excitement, but no orgasm. And um, the question is, is that okay? Well, many people report that it's still an enjoyable experience even without an orgasm. However, um, it would be more ideal if they did have an orgasm. And we know about 25% or one in four females either never have had or rarely have orgasms. So it's, it's a significant uh, issue. Now, part of the issue is if we think about uh, from penetration to orgasm, there is a difference between males and females. If you look at the average sexual response time to orgasm, it's about 11 to 15 minutes. So it takes longer to move through these four phases, right, for females. And if you go straight into penetration without any foreplay, it is quite possible that you are going to leave your partner uh, less than satisfied. Uh, so, you know, many couples engage in foreplay before penetration so that it is an enjoyable experience. And this is. Uh, in a brief synopsis, what the sexual response curve is, uh, you should have learned the four phases. You should have been able to differentiate between the male experience and the female experience. You should be able to identify the length of time from penetration to orgasm and the differences there and the recommendation of foreplay as a way of addressing some of the gaps for pleasure. So I hope you found this video useful. If you learned something, if you appreciate it, hit the like button, subscribe, click the notifications tab. That allows me to bring this video to a larger audience. YouTube tracks these kind of things. Uh, it's not for me, but it's for them to see that you value this. But in addition, if you could put a comment in the comment section, if you have a question, if you have a, a reaction, any thoughts you want to say, please, um, please put it in the comment section. And in our next video, we're going to all we're going to talk about some sexual disorders as it relates to excitement. Until then, take care, everybody.